Hi, it's Reverend David. We've been out of our sanctuary for a few weeks now, so I thought I'd come back in and give you a tour to uh, some corners of the building that folks don't usually get to see. And this morning, I wanted to take you downstairs and actually go under the sanctuary, because right underneath this space is the crypt. So come on down. In the back of the church, there is this flight of stairs that leads us downwards. So we're going to come on down here and head underneath. Give you a sense of where we're going. When the building was built from 1929 to 1931, uh, it was built largely from the design and the thinking and the ideas of the minister of the time, uh, Reverend Von Ogden Vogt. And Vogt had this notion that the future of burial in the city would be a crypt like this, a crypt for ashes that would serve the neighborhood, that wouldn't just be the church, but like the old New England parishes that served a geographic area, would, would serve the whole neighborhood. Just outside the crypt, and we're standing now right underneath where we were standing just a moment ago, is this small crypt chapel. When we have interment services of just a handful of people, we'll often do them in the crypt itself. But every so often there's a service that's not quite big enough to fill or to fit or to be in the sanctuary upstairs. But folks who want to have or need to have a little bit more grounding than just the simple interment will sometimes do a small service down here. People often wonder, what is behind the curtain over here? Uh, what's behind the curtain is water damage. <laughs> so here it is. Um, so let's come back into the crypt. So coming out of the crypt chapel and over into the crypt itself. So the, the idea was that the crypt could be expanded and that as time went on, you could keep adding to it along the whole length of the, um, the sanctuary. So far, there's one original set of bays from 31 and then another set from the 60s. Here, I'll turn on a few lights so we can see where we are. And we'll start in these, the older bays. So the idea here in the crypt is that each of these bays have space, each of these niches have space for a certain number of urns. Uh, you can see one is open right now as um, uh, we have some additional engraving and ashes coming in. You get a sense that you can fit you know, several urns in the folks who are here are all sorts of people, people who are part of the church community and people who were part of the neighborhood. Morton Dennison Hull and his wife, Catherine Bingham Hull, uh, who were the benefactors who built the building. And uh, 1931 was right when this was built, so she would have been interred just then. Von Ogden Vogt, the minister at the time, his spouse. And then all sorts of other folks, the Hikes, Tom Hike, uh, who was a member here for many years, Ken Shug, who was on the search committee that called Terry and I, and whose estate endowed the Shug ministerial intern. Uh, so, so many people, and everyone a story. Uh, Shalier Matthews, who was a dean of the Divinity School, and... Uh, and on and on, and so many I don't know. So many. It's an active crypt. We still inter folks, and maybe a half dozen times or so a year, someone will be interred. Some folks have bought niches in advance, and some are still empty and open. Some folks are people in the community and some connected with this church. So 
Chris Moore, who founded the Chicago Children's Choir, his wife Judy, who died just a few years ago. The idea in creating the crypt was that it would be for the community as a whole. Um, it's open for folks to come to by appointment when the building's open. And we regularly have people just dropping in. Sometimes after a Sunday service, someone will ask to be let in down here to visit a friend, a relative. It's powerful to me, and Terry and I preach and come back to this regularly, that the sanctuary rests on this crypt, maybe not literally architecturally, but this is what is under the floor of the sanctuary. This is what's beneath us. This is what holds us up when we're worshiping up there. You know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants in a certain way of this huge, beloved community. This that we're in now, even though the transition is really uh, nicely seamless. This area is the bays that were added in the 1960s. So when the building was first built, the crypt stopped uh, you know, right here. And so the idea is you can keep adding these sets of bays. And on the other side of this door, um, uh, which is locked from this side, there is the basement, which is full of junk. That'll be another tour. Um, but the idea is you can keep adding on. And so as we're worshiping upstairs, as we're gathering upstairs, there is this, uh, this foundation underneath us, this community of memory and hope. Some folks I never knew and some folks who we buried, Rob Borges' niche, uh, just from last fall. Neil Gerdes a few years before that. On and on and on and on. And other people who are part of this community since Terry and I came. Uh, James McClarty Lopes is there, still with a bell. Oftentimes in the niche family will put a memento, a token, um, something that was particularly meaningful for that person. And here is the bay that uh, hasn't started yet. So we've got this room for expansion. And, you know, we move slowly but steadily um, through one bay and then another. And the hope, in a certain way, is for this really to be a community resource and a community place. You know, there's no old burying ground in Hyde Park, right? But where I grew up in Massachusetts, this was part of the fabric of the landscape, right? Walking down the street, there's this old burying ground, one or another, and part of the neighborhood, part of the neighborhood. And that was the hope when this was built, and still is, still is. So this is our crypt, and we're one of a, a relatively small handful of Unitarian Universalist churches with crypts. Uh, most famous probably is in Quincy, Massachusetts, where the Unitarian Church there has the remains both of President John Adams and John Quincy Adams, both of whom were Unitarians uh, and are there. But other than that, it's a small handful. Um, Rockefeller Chapel down the street from us has the, uh, the ashes of a few of the U of C presidents. Um, Chicago Theological Seminary had, had a few also, but uh, this is really the, the only crypt in the neighborhood and one that's still active. When I came down here at first, when Terry and I were first called to this congregation in 2013, it seemed to me then like something really lovely and in a certain way like a a historical curiosity, right? Just something that was, you know, fascinating and interesting and, um, you know, like the rest of the building. But the experience for me, I think like a lot of members of the congregation, 
has over time been getting to know both the stories of some of the people already interred here before I arrived, and then also knowing a lot of these people, you know, more and more with every year. And for me, the experience of coming down and seeing, you know, Tom Hike or Ken Shug, George Reed, you know, people that we buried, is bittersweet. You know, it's beautiful in a certain way, that coming down is that reminder of their memories and seeing those names and remembering who they were and the stories and the peace of their life that I knew. In the 19th century in New England, it was a habit sometimes, uh, a custom, to go visiting a graveyard, not as a dour or a depressing thing, but as as something you did to keep alive the memories of the people who you had lost and loved. And I feel that very much. Each year, for many years, at the Religious Education Halloween Party, one of our members, Joan Peterson, puts on her jester hat costume and leads the kids down and in here, not as something spooky and not as something creepy, but gives them this beautiful tour of the place. And you've got this, this herd of like 20, 25 kids and their parents coming through who are a little nervous at first. And she sets them at ease and says, here's what this place is. It's here because we remember them and it's here because we love them. And it's here because death is a part of life. And it's here so that we remember that and that they lift us up up there, just like they do in our lives.